Today's video features May. She's a 19 year old girl from England and she's gonna watch one of my old videos and give her commentary as we go. I've featured some of her reaction videos before on my Patreon, so if you wanna see more from her, go and sign up for my Patreon, but uh, let's get into it. Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to be reacting to another one of Alexander's videos and uh, this one is titled This Behaviour is Uniquely Female. In the same way that a monkey won't release one branch until they have a firm grasp on, an on another one, um, a woman won't leave a relationship unless she has another one to go to. Um, do you think that branch swinging is an accurate concept? Not actually. That's a bit strange, honestly, because when you say that a woman needs to have another person to go to, so, sounds like quite rude. Mm. Sounds like we always need to have someone yeah. to stay with, otherwise we, got, we will not be happy. Sure. And of course that's not true. Okay. We need to be happy by ourselves. Did you see the faces that she made when asked whether or not branch swinging was real? Whether or not women stay with a partner, even if the relationship's not working, until she's lined up the next one. You can tell by her facial expressions that the idea that some women might do this is just repulsive to her. She says that it's rude. She's offended because it paints women as though they're incapable of being by themselves, as though they're utterly dependent upon men. I understand, as a sweeping generalization, that could be offensive, but I'm sure that we can be more nuanced in our discussion on this. Branch swinging is absolutely a real phenomenon, but that doesn't mean that every single woman does it. To just string somebody along is an awful thing to do, and I can understand when hearing about this as a- The interesting thing about her reaction is she wasn't so much offended by the presumption um, that women would behave this in this immoral manner, or would uh, hurt men like this, basically. She was more offended by the fact that it made women look helpless, um, which I thought was interesting. And I think the way, the reason why she um, responded that way is quite obvious. You know, you have the narrative of you know, the strong, independent women practically shoved down everyone's throats. So. I'd say most women nowadays have this knee-jerk reaction to automatically shut down anything that in any way <laughs> paints us in a bad light or suggests that we in any way need men. And another thing to consider is we tend to think in collected terms, meaning that if you were to criticize the behavior of some women or the nature of some women or just women in general, we take it personally. It's like a personal attack. Um, I'm, <laughs> I mean, even now I'm speaking collective pronouns, um, but that is the reality of it. And that's why often if you try to talk to women about very real things, such as hypergamy or monkey branching, we get very defensive. Woman, you might feel a bit defensive because you don't want to think about the fact that members of your gender are doing this. When women act this way, it makes your whole gender look bad. So I can understand that women want to deny that such a phenomenon exists, but regardless, the facts speak for themselves. This does happen. Mate selection is an inherently selfish process. Nobody has children with another person as an act of charity. There's no woman out there saying, oh, he's so shy, oh, he's so ugly. I just wanted to have children with him because I felt sorry for him. It does not happen like that. People are acting based on self-interest. And for all of our talk in modern society of civility and equality and fairness and justice, biologically, fundamentally, we're selfish. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is the thing. Even if you do see a woman with a man that is not on the same standing as her, or not the same, doesn't have the same standards, um, it's not because she felt sorry for him, it's usually because she didn't have any other options, so she kind of settled for that. Um, and that actually sparks a lot of resentment, to be honest. Similarly, I don't think any men <laughs> would turn around and say, Oh, that poor ugly woman, I'm just, I'm gonna, you know, give her some children or whatever, because of the poor thing. I don't think that happens either. Um, so... Yeah, I think we're all quite selfish when it comes to mate selection.
and <laughs> reproduction. Um, and yeah, you're right. Everybody talks about being civil and accepting people and not being prejudiced and all this stuff. But it doesn't match up to um, our biology or our natural instincts. It just doesn't make any sense. You can say what you want, but it's not going to fundamentally change the way that any of us have been wired. Men are attracted to young, fertile, beautiful women, and women are driven by hypergamy, the instinct to find the highest value mate that they can. I'm not saying that one gender is more selfish than the other. I'm not even just talking about humans. I'm saying for all species across the planet, biologically, the desire to mate is selfish. That's what we are. It doesn't really matter what we say. What matters is what we do, and our actions speak for themselves. We are always looking to get the best deal for ourselves possible. We asked about this later in the interview, if women ever break up to trade up, you know, swapping one partner for another because they think that they can get a better deal. And when phrased this way, we got a very different response from her. Like for example, they might think, oh, this person's more attractive, or this guy's got more money, or yeah. maybe, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. This quite yeah. Quite yeah. Yeah. Um, do women ever break up uh, to trade up? So like, for example, leaving their current partner in favor of a higher status guy um, who, who might show an interest in her. Not just women, everyone can do this. Not just women. You see, she thinks that it's true, but she doesn't think that it's exclusive to women. I disagree. Now, there may be instances where men do break up with a woman when a better option presents itself, a younger, more beautiful girl, but fundamentally, branch swinging is a female behavior. And I'm going to use this video to explain the results of a scientific study which demonstrates this. The study is called Loving and Leaving Sex Differences in Romantic Attachments. It's an older study, and in this research, they tracked the progress of couples who broke up, specifically how they felt about their ex partners. It's really quite fascinating to see how different men and women are as they respond to breakups. Now I'm going to run through the findings of this study and demonstrate to you scientifically why branch swinging is primarily a female behavior. From the outset, the researchers looked at the data and recognized that this myth that we have that men are the practical ones and women are these hopeless romantic idealists is not backed up by reality. It doesn't apply to relationships. Let me read directly from the study. In spite of our prevailing stereotypes about romantic women or women out to catch a man, there is converging evidence that men tend to fall in love more readily than women do. Men have consistently found to have higher scores than women on measures of romanticism. And another part of the study. Surprisingly, in light of the prevailing stereotype of romantic women, men rated the desire to fall in love as a significantly more important reason for entering the relationship than did women. This isn't su I mean, well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very obvious when you see how quickly um, some men can get attached to the women that they're interested in and how much could obsess over it. Um, it can be quite startling, to be honest. Um, and I think that the reason for this is I mean, I've said it before, love and falling in love and romance is more of a luxury than anything else. And the thing is, as a woman, you don't have that luxury. You need to think in practical terms from an you know, evolutionary point of view. Um, because sexual relationships and getting partner doesn't just like, it's not meant to just enhance your life or to explore your feelings or anything like that. It's meant to be the basis of your survival, you know, both in terms of reproduction and protection. Whereas as a man, you're more self-sufficient. You can basically defend yourself. And so it's, yeah, you still need women to reproduce with, but it's not as much of a need. You're not so um, dependent on it, I suppose. So you have more leg room. You have more room to think about these things and write love poems and <laughs> be infatuated with women. I also think that men falling in love with women more readily actually serves the purpose of evolution. Because if you think about um, the evolutionary jackpot for a man being, oh, I get a woman pregnant and then I bounce, you know, I don't have to pay for anything or support them or protect them, you know, in order to kind of... <clears throat> counteract that instinct 
I think. I mean, this is just theory. <laughs> I don't actually have any, <laughs> um, you know, evidence to back it up. But I think that that's it's meant to counteract that instinct, love. That is, so you'd grow a very strong emotional attachment to whatever women you're interested in, which will um, improve the chances of you actually sticking around. Surprising because we know from studying human evolution that women have had to be more practical when it comes to relationships. Throughout the history of human evolution, love and partnering up wasn't about romantic candlelit dinners or poetry, it was about survival. Women needed a man who had good genes, who could father healthy children, who could protect her from danger. We really shouldn't be surprised that branch swinging is a female behavior because it's really the ultimate expression of self-preservation and survival. You don't want to leave the protection of one relationship until you've guaranteed the protection of a new one. While men might occasionally dump a woman for somebody younger and hotter, this female branch swinging is really not the same thing. That's because men are a lot more self-sufficient when it comes to survival, but women really were dependent on men not just for their own safety, but for the safety of their children. Women depended upon their relationships in order to live. Women will take the few examples of men, you know, trading up, leaving, um, you know, older women who've had children and everything with him, or younger, more vibrant, beautiful women, and kind of take that and stamp it onto every single other man and be like, this is what you do. So, you know, don't come and talk to me about how I trade up, you do the same thing. When, in reality, I don't think that happens nearly as much as women think it does. I mean, I used to think that that was the case, that that was normal, and <laughs> it was quite shocking to realise that it wasn't that way. And so, while for men, they might have the luxury of viewing relationships as a romantic exercise, and sometimes that might even be true for women. but Fundamentally, when the chips are down at their core, for women, relationships are about survival. That is the instinct that evolution has gifted us. And so when it comes down to it, women are going to be guided by self-interest. And you can see that branch swinging is just fundamentally the most practical choice. And so if branch swinging was real, what we would expect to see is that women are more inclined than men in relationships to be seeking out alternatives. Mm. They would be more likely to be looking for other men. They'd always have an eye out for other options. And that is exactly what the data shows us. Reading directly from the study, apparently related to women's ability to give up love more readily than men do is the fact that women tended to see the breakup coming sooner than men did. There was an overall tendency for women to report that the breakup was more gradual as opposed to abrupt than their boyfriends reported. To women, they experience the breakup as being more gradual because they've been thinking about it for a long time. They've been scoping out the alternatives they've been thinking about their options. For the man, the breakup appeared to be abrupt because he wasn't looking at other options, he was completely invested in the relationship. It didn't even occur to him to look for alternatives, and he certainly wasn't aware that that's what she was doing. Now, you could say that all of this really proves is that men are more clueless, less able to pick up on the subtle cues that the woman's giving off. Maybe the signs were there, he just wasn't picking up on them. There is some truth to that, but there's more to the story. Here's what the study says. To write it off as all men just can't pick up on social cues because they're socially inept or whatever. To say that they're clueless is not fair, I don't think. And the reason why I say that is because I think, whether subconsciously or consciously, a woman will hide the fact that she has doubts of, in the relationship or that she's looking at finding a new partner just in case the prospect of finding the new partner falls through. I think it's just like, just in case my new plan doesn't go forward, I haven't burnt any bridges. I still have this secure partner and you know, that's in the bag, it's settled. And then only once she's realized, okay, this is a done deal with my new prospect, then she'll just have the breakup. And there isn't really any thought put into oh, well, this will come as a surprise and it'll be very strange. And no, I don't think so. There isn't really much thought put into how the man would feel, I think. Women tended to be more sensitive than men to problem areas in their relationship. 
and that women were more likely than men to compare the relationship to alternatives, whether hypothetical or actual. You see, while men are just bumbling along, enjoying the relationship, women don't have that luxury. A woman has a very limited time window when she's still young and beautiful and able to attract a high value mate. She needs to be practical, methodical even, in evaluating her options and making sure that she's getting the best possible deal that she can. Now, if I don't speak from experience, I haven't had any romantic or sexual relationships. Um, but the amount of times my friends or family, like female family members of course, would ask for my advice. But even just small things in a relationship <laughs> put so much significance onto such minute details within their dynamic. And ask me, what's my advice, you know? Um, is this okay? Is that okay? I mean, is this normal for a relationship? Things going right. It's just, it's all the time. It's constant. It, I, it's exhausting, really. It's exhausting for me to listen to it. I don't know how it must feel to be in a constant state of anxiety like that. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's more subconscious than that. But yeah. So not only are you or is a woman um, evaluating it in her own mind, but she's talking to other people and she is contrasting and comparing with what, you know, the norms of relationships are, what her friends are doing. And um, that greatly impacts how she sees the relationship as a whole. And you're absolutely right to say that, you know, bring up the fact that we have this small biological window. We think about it all the time. Like, <laughs> I, I've got a lot of time ahead of me, but even I, I think about it. And even the women that I know who aren't red-pilled at all, they talk about it all the time, which is, oh, what, what is my plan going to be? What, what is the timeline? <laughs> What's the timeline? When are we going to do this? When are we going to do that? Um, I'll need to get a partner at this and we'll probably, I don't know, be in a relationship for two years and then get married. And it's just, yeah, it's a great source of anxiety and frustration <laughs> for women. And I think it unfair that frustration and anger unfairly gets placed on men a lot, I think. If you don't believe me that women have practical considerations at the forefront of their mind, not romantic ones, when considering whether or not to proceed with a relationship, have a look at this list of the reasons why women would end a relationship. Reading directly from the study, we found that women indicated more problems had contributed to the breakup than men did. In particular, more women than men cited differences in interests, differences in intelligence, conflicting ideas about marriage, my desire for independence, and my interest in someone else as contributing factors. The only problem that men cited more frequently than women was living too far apart. So, we've established that women are more calculating when it comes to deciding whether or not to end a relationship. But if brand swinging is real, and women really are more practical in their relationship considerations than men are, then we would expect women to handle breakups a lot better than men do. And again, that's exactly what the science tells us. Reading from the study. First, a woman's love was a better predictor or barometer of the continuation of the relationship than a man's love. And second, as a prelude to and or as a consequence of the ending of a close relationship, women's love tended to diminish more than men's. Both of these conclusions seem consistent with the proposition that women tend to fall out of love more readily than men do. Mm. I've looked at other studies and they all back up this research. Women take breakups harder in the beginning, probably because they're more readily able to access their emotions. But on the whole, in the long term, women recover from breakups much more quickly. And First of all, going through that list of um, that the problems, problems brought up in a relationship. Um, I'll admit this. <laughs> I'm just going to be 100% honest. A lot of the time, these problems are created. So th what I mean by that is, there will be things occurring in the relationship that never were a problem. They were absolutely fine, it was never a point of concern. But once a woman has made it up in her mind that she's going to break up with this person, especially in the pursuit of another, she will bring up all these things um, <clears throat> and say, oh, these are all problems that I've been thinking about forever, but they haven't really been thinking about it, if that makes sense. Um, 
bottom line is, if a woman wants to break up with a man, she will come up with every possible reason or problem to break up with them. And, yeah, it's uh, not quite an uncomfortable truth, but it is the reality of the situation. And it's almost like we're kind of wired to cut ourselves off from a partner um, as much as we can. And creating these problems makes that easy, I suppose. I mean, young boys kill themselves over, you know, women breaking up with them. It's, it's a no-brainer that women deal with breakups far more easily. And, you know, just in what's observable in your everyday lives, you see it. Women break up with their partners and then, like, I don't know, even two months, some people do it in weeks, they're with a new person. So, yeah, it's just observably true. And then, of course, you have studies to back it up as well. And also, women do fall out of love far more easily than men do. And thoroughly than men do. Of course they do. That's what their evolutionary instincts have guided them to do, because relationships are practical. Yes, it's sad, but we need to move on. What's the next thing? Who's the next man? It's time to get on with it. Have a look at this graph. You can see that after the breakup, men retain stronger feelings of love for their exes than women do. After a woman has moved on to another man, her feelings for her previous partner vanish much more quickly. It's the man who's left reeling. Again, reading from the study, these data suggest that men were hit harder by the breakup than were women. In the wake of the breakup, men tended to report that they felt more depressed, more lonely, less happy, and less free than did their former girlfriends. Even women who had been more involved in the relationship than their boyfriends tended to feel greater equanimity after the breakup than did men in comparable situations. And lastly, the notion that the young adult male is by definition a heartless sexual predator does not bear examination. In point of fact, some of the most acute cases of depression I have ever had to deal with occurred in attempting to help young men with their betrayal by a young woman in whom they had invested a great deal, and who had, as the relationship developed, exploited them rather ruthlessly. It continues to fascinate me that our society perpetuates this myth that men are these cold, unfeeling creatures who just use women up, who aren't interested in commitment, when all of that flies in the face of the established science. It's not just astonishing, it actually causes damage because whenever you have a map that doesn't accurately represent the landscape, the territory, there's going to be casualties. Right now, the cost is borne by the millions of men who don't understand the evolutionary instincts that are guiding female behavior when it comes to dating and relationships. They think that women are these sweet, pure, angelic, romantic creatures, and they proceed based on that belief. Nobody told them that women are practical and calculating when it comes to their relationships. They're completely unprepared, they're going in blind because nobody actually took the time to say to them, hey, you know, women are guided by self-interest. When it comes to mating, they're as selfish as anybody. And I'm not judging women. If you think that this video is about judging women, about hating on women, then you've completely missed the point. I'm just explaining the biology. I'm not shaming women when it comes to dating. Of course they're selfish. I'm selfish when it comes to dating. If I was a woman, I'd probably be making the same choices. But it really bothers me that we continue to deny this, that we continue to push this myth that men are these selfish, immoral creatures using women up, and that women are completely beyond that. That kind of map to give to young men when they're trying to navigate the dating market is dangerous, it's harmful, it's causing all kinds of depression. I'm getting emotional, but I deal with this. I have private consultations with guys who were completely unprepared for what they walked into, and it, it sucks. Branch swinging is real. It's a completely immoral behavior, and it's something only a low quality woman would do. But the instinct is very, very real. And most importantly, it's far more common than we realize. If you think back to the reaction that the woman gave at the beginning of the video when she said that the suggestion that branch swinging could be real was rude? No, it's not rude, it's reality. And until we stop collectively pedestalizing women and take a more mature, reality-based approach, something that actually reflects biology, evolutionary psychology, then more and more innocent men are going to continue to get hurt. I think the reason why this myth of men being this way is continued is because it's convenient. It's used as an excuse 
for women who do act in this way, who do behave coldly and in a manipulative manner towards men, it gives them an excuse to do it. It justifies their actions. It's a kind of childish way of looking at, you know, well, you are like this, so it's fine for me to be like this. And that's how they go about it. <laughs> it's just not true, because if you spoke to your average man about relationships or whatever, they would tell you they're looking for a companionship, they're looking for love. And no one will accept this. And it's confusing as well. And I do not agree with women being put on a pedestal. It creates all sorts of problems, and I honestly could talk about it for days. Hey, I hope that you enjoyed that. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, I have other reaction videos on my Patreon from May, so if you want to hear more from her, just go and sign up over there. My latest video is me reacting to an interview that we took on the topic of branch swinging, where this woman that you're seeing on the screen right now, she thoroughly denied it, or she tried to play it off as a male-centric um, activity. <laughs> so if you want to see my reaction to that, just go and sign up on my Patreon. I'd love to see you over there.